another timeless classic with easily one of the greatest people that's ever lived ever. Labyrinth with David Bowie. Fuck yes. David Bowie saw. So. But that man is immortal. He really is. I don't think he'll ever die. He'll be like 300 years old. He'll still be gone. Um, this is one of the best films you'll ever see ever. It's a you. Uh, I do recommend that all children should watch this film at least once. It will definitely improve their childhood and their imagination. But even so, children can get a bit scared of this. Because there is disgustingly hideous monsters in it. And I have to admit, <laughs> David Bowie near the end does freak you out because he is a bit of a pedophile in a way. Because he's like watching this girl, this lonely preteen girl running around a cramped maze for a crystal ball. And he's just watching her, not speaking. It's quite, it's quite weird to watch, but easily one of the best films you'll ever see ever. Um, next up, another one of the best films you've ever seen ever. One of the funniest, Nick. But it's not as good as Shaun of the Dead, because that is the best Zoncom ever. Zombieland, the second best Zoncom ever. <sighs> what can I say about this film? If Woody Harrelson was not in this film as Tallahassee, and it was anybody else playing uh, Tallahassee, it wouldn't be as good, because he just makes the character. <laughs> His absolute obsession with Twinkies and Bill Murray are easily the best selling points. And the rules, the rules that Jesse Eisenberg's character comes up with. And the implementation, the um, Splinter Shell Conviction style that they, they are in as they are in the film is quite, fan, it's quite fantastic. Uh, the other two characters, they do bring, bring a lot to the film, bring an added fullness to the film. But it's just great to watch. It's so much fun and it's basically I describe it as the zombie film next to Shaun of the Dead that actually shows what we would all do in a zombie apocalypse. Well this basically shows what all Americans would probably do in a zombie film. Shaun of the Dead shows what all British people would do in a zombie film. And this they'd go shop searching around killing lots of zombies and being badasses and in Britain we'd just go to the pub. <laughs> Brilliant. Next up, another one of the best films of all time and one of the longest films of all time, Troy. Oh it's a good film. It's a really good film. Really, really long though. It's one of the longest films of all time. It's like it's like Godfather long. But it's worth the watch, like Godfather. It's really good. Next up, um, easily what I think as the best in the series is Saw 6. Saw 6, right? After watching Saw 3, I thought to myself, no, it was either 3 or 4, I thought to myself, right, that, that's about as good as it's going to get. They're not going to make a better film than that, because, I mean, they've got to run out of ideas eventually. Then Saw 6 came, and it was surprisingly really fresh. And I was actually really surprised by how original the traps were in this one, how gory they were, and how twisty the new plot elements were. It wasn't, I, don't, I, I, well, I can't remember it being cliche. And I actually found it really entertaining. That's why I bought it. <laughs> the games look shit. This makes the other films look shit, but I still, I'm a big Saw fan, so. But yeah, this is easily the best Saw film. I couldn't give two shits about seven, really, because it's just gone a bit too far. Um, the last two, and easily probably one of oh, these are some of the best. <laughs> v for Vendetta, one of the best films I've ever seen, ever. It is absolutely mind-blowing. It's revolutionary. It's like... It's like anarchy, the anarchy symbol, revolutionary. It is great. It is just, I honestly think that if this film never came out, Britain wouldn't be what it is today. Because this film has changed a lot in Britain. I would, well, I'd like to think that it's changed a lot, how people perceive the government and how people react to the government and how, 
how much people are willing to actually stand up against what is wrong that the government is doing and what people believe is wrong that the government is doing. Um, and I believe, I do honestly believe that it's inspired a lot more people to come out and voice their opinions on what they think is right and what should happen in like, the world. Because what this film basically is trying to portray is that, that you shouldn't let corrupt government men, and mostly men, because well, there's more women nowadays, but back when this came out, there barely wasn't. You should never let them just get into complete control because they'll just screw it up. And this film is basically about freedom. Freedom, speech, and actions and all things, but it's a timeless classic. It's a pure genius film. Who directed this? Oh Christ, I can't even bother. Still, <laughs> it's an absolute gem of a film. Probably won't ever be another film like this ever again. But it's great. Um, <laughs> the last film, and again, certainly not least, Get Him to the Greek. <laughs> this film is amazing. I went to the cinema to see this, and I've only ever seen it once, and I still remember everything. Hilariously funny. It is literally laugh out loud and tears funny. The tears will tears of laughter will flow because of this film. <laughs> it's absolutely hilarious. It's so much fun. And Kanye West, I think Kanye West in this film is a surprise. It's a surprise addition to this film. It really is a surprise entry in this film. I didn't, I didn't actually think he'd be as funny as he was, or as good as an actor he was, and he was fantastic. He was one of the best characters in the film. And Russell Brand, I think, I'm glad Russell Brand starred in a film like this, because I think, in my opinion, well, I never really thought anything different of the man after that incident that him and Jonathan Ross had. But I would like to think that this kind of redeemed himself, because I love Russell Brand, I think he's a genius, I think he's hilarious. And the, the luckiest man in the world for marrying Katy Perry. Um, that's all he's genius. And Jonah Hill, Jonah Hill. After Superbad, I honestly thought that he couldn't do any better. And that was, that was just his stunt stint, I thought he would just be a one-trick pony. In. But no, he's great in this. And then you get Russell Brand's father in this film. He's a surprise entry in the film because he just comes out of nowhere, but he's so funny. Um, and, oh god, I don't know how they did it, but um, making Russell Brand into a, a fake artist and actually coming up with shit songs that are actually good to listen to is great. African Child is hilarious. It's a good film. Well worth watching. And a definite must have. If you love to laugh, so good. <laughs> oh well, that does that. Um, I don't know how many Blu-ray films that in, that makes in total, but there's a lot. And that concludes that. Um, it's a good collection. If you want, on either my games or my films, my Blu-rays. If you want to leave a comment down below, please feel free to do so. I'll read every single one, and if they're good, well, if I feel I should reply, I will reply. If you want to just abuse me for how shit I am at making videos, then I really don't give a fuck. Just do it. Because your opinion counts, doesn't it? And your opinion matters, and it helps any advice that people would have to make a better video. Yeah. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. And even if, even if only two people watch, my videos, um, I'll still be happy because at least someone's made the effort to watch them. That puts a smile on my face. Um, so, yeah. That's about it, really. And thanks again for watching. Hope everyone has a great rest of January, a great night, blah blah blah, and everyone takes care. See you all later again. <laughs>